everyone, it's Jenna Hart here with Write With Heart, and I'm so excited today to have Susie England, who I have actually known for quite a few years. She and I got our writing start kind of at the same time doing the same thing, um, and so it's been really exciting to watch her writing career go. And just a little bit about her, uh, she says here that she fell in love with fiction the minute she picked up her first Judy Bloom book in third grade. She's a retired elementary educator and a native Texan who lives in Houston with her husband. She's the proud mom of two adult children, just like me, um, and a dog mom um, to her Havanese named Ivy, right? <laughs> now, she's the author of the novella The Weekend um, by Silver Phoenix in 2019 and a rom-com Chasing Mr. Crown, a Wattpad paid story, which has amassed over one point. 5 million reads, and uh, the soon-to-be-released women's fiction novel, Perfect, by Wild Rose Press, coming out uh, this year. Now, when she's not writing, she's binge-watching British television, like I do. She listens to true crime podcasts, um, or cheering her alma mater, the University of Texas at Austin, and her website is Susie England, that's Susie with a Z, S-U-Z-Y, England, as in the country, dot com. And of course, I'll have a link to this over at writewithheart.com so you can uh, check everything out. Susie, thank you so much for uh, talking with me today. Oh my gosh, this is such a treat. I just love hanging out with you, my old friend. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah. well, um, like I said, you know, my goal here in talking to other authors is to sort of learn about their journey and all the different ways now people are finding success and getting their stories out in the world. So I really wanted to start with, like, I, I know you said that you were interested in fiction by reading Judy Bloom um, as a kid. Um, just to note, my first Judy Bloom book was, um, it was a young adult. It was about the couple that gets pregnant. What's that called? Forever? Oh, that's forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was my first, but I wasn't I a kid. To, yeah. I had to sneak and read that with a neighbor <laughs> in her closet. We were in fifth grade. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand all of it, but I was thought I was really living on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anywho, um, so sort of how, how did you start writing, you know, going from liking to read fiction to actually writing it? Well, according to my mom, um, who sadly is no longer with me, she said that I really started writing, uh, in first grade. I wrote a poem about a bubble and my teacher read it, um, at parent night in front of the class and my mother didn't know about it. And then later, years later, when we were talking about this poem, my mother didn't really believe that I wrote it. So imagine being accused of plagiarism by your own mother because she just didn't think that a first grader would write a poem like that. So that's really my first experience with writing. Um, later on in elementary school, I actually started a little writing club in fifth grade. And we wrote silly little stories about kids in our class. And I wrote with the pen name Lucky Lemon Lollipop. That was my, <laughs> that was my very sophisticated pen name in in, um, in fifth grade. But I always loved to write. I always loved English. I'm a I'm an English history minded person. I'm not a math science person. So whenever I got to English class every day, that was like my jam. In high school, I wrote. I journaled. I wrote a lot of poetry. Um, I ended up writing my own version of the Canterbury Tales. I wrote my own tale. I wrote in iambic pentameter when I was a senior wow. <laughs> nerd girl, um, when it came to writing, um, I even wrote my own version of Thornton Wilder's Our Town and my sophomore English teacher printed it and she taught it as a companion piece in her class when they read Our Town for several years. Wow. Yeah, so that was, I've, I've always loved to do it, you know, all the way back from that, you know, the little poem about the bubble in first grade. Uh, but then once I got married and had kids, you know, life takes over. I was working full time as a teacher. Um, I just retired. So now I can focus on, on this uh, journey as an author more, but I just got really busy. Um, and then back in the early 2000s, when my, when my kids were small, um, I started thinking about one of my favorite fandoms and this was back when Yahoo groups was kind of a thing. Right. Right. And I thought, mm, I'm going to pop over to here to these Yahoo groups and kind of see what's going on. See if any of my fandoms have groups and lo and behold, 
there they were. Mm -hmm. And that's when I discovered this thing called fan fiction. Right. And honestly, my very first thought was, who are these weirdos that write? <laughs> yeah. You know? And I was like, this is so strange. And then, you know, fast forward, not very much longer, uh, maybe a year later, proud member of the weirdos. And that's yeah. when I started writing. And that's really when, when stuff started to take off for me. Yeah. Yeah. In a lot of ways, you and I are similar. Um, I have a cat, not a dog, but you know, I got two grown kids and, and I was sort of the same way, you know, discovered, you know, the internet and the ability to connect with people that had similar interests that, that were different. Like nobody in my world that I connect with person to person has that interest, you know, in, oh, in TV shows or whatever, the books, totally. are really, whatever. So the internet was really, really great for that. And, um, and I remember uh, discovering fan fiction. And, and again, I, I sort of had the first that first thought. Um, but I think part of it was because a lot of it was so bad. Or I couldn't recognize the characters in it. You know what I mean? Right. And when I read one that was amazing you know and it really sort of opened my eyes because I always had this idea like oh I wish they had done a show about this or I wish they had done a show addressing that or whatever and so all of a sudden I could do that and I'll, I'll be honest I'm not like you I I didn't write well I wrote fan fiction in fifth grade um with you know a different show but I, the idea that I write is amazing to me because I didn't like English writing scared me you know but really? yeah. that's so, that is so interesting yeah. but I like this the making up the story element right? right so um so yeah then it became a thing and for me I had a story stolen twice and that was when I thought oh maybe maybe I could do something here so um so it's funny so when you started writing fan fiction, and, and I, I sort of remember, you know, um, you were one of the people that was like, wow, she's really, really good. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about how starting that way for the people who still think only weirdos write fan fiction, like how that might have helped you develop to where you are now. Um, well, I will just say right off the bat that um, I think some of the best stuff I've ever written, I mean, that I've ever read was written as fan fiction in, in all, in multiple fandoms that, that I follow. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I, I say, when I say weirdos, I, of course, I use that lovingly as, as sure. a term. So um, a nerd. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, no, when I, when I very first started, you know, I, I had no idea what the response was going to be because it was something I I'd never done before. When I was in school, I had always had positive responses from my teachers to my writing, from even my classmates to my writing. But this was something completely different because literally it was something that I, I didn't even know existed. You know, I mean, when I started doing it, I had really only been reading fan fiction and following some of these fandoms for a short time, like a year. Um, so it wasn't very long. So I was like, this could go horribly wrong. But when I put it out there, the response I got was so positive and it was just immediate. And I was, I got into this routine of kind of trying to, you know, serialize it like the shows and just put some content out there every week, like little mini episodes. And the fact that I was getting just such great feedback and it was just instant, it was like continuing to just light the fire under me to just keep going, keep going, keep going. And by the time I finished my first real piece of fan fiction, it was 280,000 words. Good Lord. <laughs> Once you added all that, and it yeah. was, you know, yes, yeah. it was like little episodes, but they were all tied together. So it right. was like one big giant story. And I was like, right. well, that would never sell because that's right. Unless you're like Tolkien or George R. R. Martin, nobody's going <laughs> to publish you know, right. 280,000 words. So I was like, okay, yeah. let's, let's backtrack and think about how I could, you know, transition this into something else. But the people that I've met who have read my fan fiction from all those years ago, we are still friends. They yeah. still support me. It has been, they are some of the most loving and forgiving readers yeah. to allow me to practice, to hone this, to try to make it better. Um, and they will call you out when they don't like something. 
which I think is, has yeah. been, has been really funny. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I like a lot of them have warnings now or, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because we all have our, you know, everybody has their idea of how they picture pe- uh, characters in a fandom being, you know, and, and sometimes you want to push that a little bit, you know, let's see if I can get them to do this. And, and right. some people are like, I don't like that. Yeah, some people are very, they have their certain parameters that they want their characters yeah. to operate in. I try to stay as true to the character as I possibly can. And um, I really feel like when it comes to my writing, if I had to find something to compliment myself on, I think I'm really good at dialogue. And so I think I've really tried to keep some of these characters in fan fiction, like really true with the dialogue, but right. I like to mix up the world and throw them into a different universe. And that has not always been yeah. very well received. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's tough. Um, okay. So you started writing this fan fiction. You're, you're starting to, you know, see that, okay, I got something here. But the other part about fan fiction readers is that um, they are not as um, the quality in terms of the quality of the writing, the craft of the writing. It doesn't have to be really, really great. I mean, they are just so happy to have a story (laughs) about characters they love. And so I know for me, when I thought I wanted to make the transition, I thought, you know, having them say I'm great is sort of like saying my mother says I'm great, (laughs) right? Yes, I 100% agree. How how do I know that I got what it takes? But, you know, how did you think, oh, I'm going, I want to try and do something original, Um, you know, where did that come from? Well, actually it came from one of my fellow weirdos uh, (laughs) in the, in the fanfic writing world who, uh, was, had heard about Wattpad and this friend reached out and said, Hey, have you ever thought about trying to write something, uh, and posting it on Wattpad? And this was back in like 2015, I guess. Right. And I said, first question, what is a Wattpad? I didn't even know what that was. And so I did a little research and looked around and she said, hey, the friend said they're offering a two book publishing contract in a certain contest that they're sponsoring on Wattpad. I think you should enter. Well, that was all great and fine, but I only had a few weeks by the time I found out about the contest, I only had a few weeks to get something submitted. So what I did is I took a story, a la E.L. James and Anna Todd that I had written as part of fan fiction and I completely reworked it and and put it on there. And I actually, the friend that told me about the contest and introduced me to Wattpad, she and I would sit down together every night for three weeks. And she helped me work my way through this process. Because like you said, they're very forgiving and understanding and hungry for things in the fandom, but that doesn't translate to a more polished piece of traditional, you know, literature. So all the head hopping I could do in fan fiction and just yeah, that was not going to fly in, in the real world, so to speak. So it, it took some time. Uh, and I realized, wow, you know, I've, yes, I had the skeletons of these other characters, um, but now it's time to p- take all of those things away. And I truly have to create characters from scratch. So that's, that's what I did. And I was able to make the deadline and submit the story into the contest. Um, I think there were about 3,000 entries. Uh, I made the top 50. And then I went back again, another round of voting and made the top 25. And then after that, I didn't move up. They announced a top 10. I did not make the top 10 with that story. But I got a small following who really loved it and have just continued to build on that since 2015. Um, that gave me a little bit of exposure on, on the site. And it's just, it's just kind of gone from there. So um, I've taken several of stories that began as fan fiction. Okay. All of everything other than the characters were, were my own creation, right? The plots, the settings, the, all of that, that was all mine stripped away everything from those existing characters from the fan fiction created new characters. And those have been 
also popular and it's been great. And right now I'm working on two completely original, all in my own brain books. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a process, but it's, it's been great. So that's kind of how I've, how I'd made the little bit of the transition, but yeah, like you said, it's hard. And, and I think you mentioned before talking about how fan fiction writing lets you hone some of the skills. So when you learn the rules, like you really shouldn't head hop and now being able to do that. I know with me, I mean, I still do write fan fiction sometime, although it's been months and you know, maybe even a year, but um, and I have something left unfinished. I'm waiting for somebody to bother me about it. But anyway, um, consider this me bothering you. Please finish it. This is your official notice. You are on notice now, Jenna. That's right. That's right. But um, what I was going to say is that even now, when I discover something, like I discovered that, because when I started writing, it was third person past. And now there's, you know, first person, first person past, first person present. And I, and I listened on the audio book to a woman who writes first person present. And it just sort of, I mean, I loved it. It was so immersive and immediate. And it's like, I'm, I was running at the time. I don't run anymore, but it was like, like I was running beside them. Like they were yeah. here with me and I thought I have to try that. So where did I try it first? I tried it in fan fiction, you know? Um, because the ease of fan fiction is that I know these people. I mean, I have to put them in places and things, but in terms of how they're going to, how they're going to talk, what they're going to, how they're going to behave, what their motivations are, you know, that's all there. I don't have to think about that. So I found it a really good place to practice new things that you want to try out, like changing writing in a tense or changing from third to first person or something. Absolutely. That is the beauty. So, um, you know, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I wrote fan fiction for years and never told a soul. I really think that for a long time there was a stigma around it. And now I'm like, I do it. Yeah, I do it. And I will probably do it again. And some of the greatest things that I've read were written by authors that nobody's ever heard of in the mainstream. Um, But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan and I really wouldn't be where I am today. If that loving group of people in that first fandom, right. Were able to allow me to share some words with them. Right. Right. And, and, and I'm like you too. I've poached from my stories. Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, I've done that and I'm okay with it. <laughs> no, am I. <laughs> um, because yeah, I mean, all the, like you said, the plots and everything are totally on you, you know? And so you just change up the characters a little bit and, you, and, and the people who know you in fan fiction would read it, might recognize it. And I swear to God, I give nods sometimes sure. to, to them, you know, um, when I'm writing little wink winks, you know, <laughs> to them, um, you know, because like you said, without them, I, I don't know what I'd be. Well, I'd probably still be a social worker doing something or other I don't know <laughs> anywho um so okay so you participated in a WAPAD contest and so then how did you get and was that chasing Mr. Crown that you that was chasing Mr. Crown okay yes. okay um and um so from there you know now you have some books that are published you have a book coming out you have another one published um you know how do you get from there okay I've had the success I made it to the top 25 and now I'm I'm known on Wattpad how did you get from there to being published well getting getting seen on Wattpad um is there's there's really no rhyme or reason to how it happens um Wattpad has a proprietary algorithm uh and it's just one of those things that I was kind of invited into one of their programs and that helped elevate me on the platform. Uh, Some people, it happens quickly. Other people write on the platform. It doesn't happen. You know, it's like all areas of publishing. Everybody's journey is so different and the wheels turn very slowly for some people. Mm -hmm. Um, So you just have to be, you know, you just have to get in there and just keep putting the work in and trying it. But what actually happened was after I had published multiple things on Wattpad, I had a reader from Australia reach out to me and said, hey, I just read this novella that you have published. 
um, which is this book right here. <laughs> um, and she said, I am in a graduate program at the University of Southern Queensland. It's an editing and publishing program. And we have been tasked with bringing forward novellas that are not traditionally published um, to, to pick one for our class and take it through the entire process. And she said, well, our, our class is not very big. I think there was, I'm not sure how many people were in the class, 30, 40 ish people. I'm not really sure the exact number, but they were divided into some small groups. And those groups had to find a book, you know, on a platform or wherever, a blog, whatever the case may be, um, and then present those to the class. And then the class would then read the books and then they would vote on a book. So, my very first reaction was, well, this is a scam, you know, <laughs> you know because I mean, somebody random that you right. don't know reaches out and was like, hey, hey I'm across the world. Yeah. And I want to publish your book. You're like, sure you do. Right. It doesn't happen that way. People don't just cold call you to publish your book. So right. I was, right. I, I sat on the, on the email for, for a bit, for about a week. I sat on it so long that the person circled back and said, hey, I'm not sure if this got in your spam, you know, but this is what we wanted. So I started doing a little bit of research and the names that were dropped within the email, they were legit people. That was a legit program. And I had also just watched a Netflix series with the author uh, and social worker Brene Brown, who I'm sure many people love and admire. She's right here in Houston. She's at the University of Houston. She's also a graduate of the University of Texas like me. I'm a huge Brene Brown fan. I had just watched her Netflix series about taking risks and what's the worst that could happen. And when I got that second email, I mean, it was like the next day after I watched the series, I was like, what's, it's already out there on the internet. Like yeah. what is honestly, what is the risk? Right. And so I said, sure. I sent them a PDF and a few weeks later, they told me that the class had selected my book and I was floored wow. because I did not think a group of 20 something year olds would be interesting in publishing a novella about an older couple and their little weekend tryst. And I, cause you know, there was like fantasy and sci-fi and other books that, and I was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> see it. A little romance. <laughs> yeah. So I did not see that happening at all, but they did it. And you know what? At the end of it all, they were true to their promise. And here is the first actual book I got to hold in my hand. So who whose writing journey happens like that? Who, I mean, that's, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane that that was somebody that came to me from Wattpad, because if you would have told me that that was going to happen, I would have been like, uh, there is no way that is not how publishing works. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise we'd all just be sitting here refreshing, waiting for the email to pop up. Somebody that's right. That's right. Yeah, you know, exactly. I've been on and off Wattpad, you know, and, and, and probably my problem is I'm not consistent, right? I mean, I have half a book up there, uh, but then last night I did, I, I just one after another put up, it's about 48,000 words, you know, and of course this morning I go, look, has anybody found it yet? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> But, you know, I know, I know there's more to it. Um, but before we get to more about Wattpad, I want to ask, um, you know, tell us a little bit of, about what you write, because I know, you know, what you started with, again, you have this couple or, you know, there's romantic elements, but I know your newer work is more of a marriage in trouble, um, uh, women's fiction type thing. So, Yes. So, you know, when you, when you start off on fan fiction, you don't, we'd already established that you don't know all the rules. Okay. Right. So when I decided that I wanted to be traditionally published and, and do some things and write some query letters and send stuff out, I was very green. I was very naive. I sent things out that were not ready to be sent out. I, I feel like there's a lot of authors that have followed this same path. It's really kind of, you have to learn as you go in a lot of ways. Right. Um, and, and it's not going to be the same for, for everybody. Um, I wrote some things that I thought were romance, but they really weren't romance. They really were women's fiction. Because right. again, you have to look at the rules. What's a romance in fan fiction is not a romance on a shelf in a bookstore. A bookstore, right. It's just because people fall in love doesn't automatically make it a romance. And this is something that I've had to learn. So I've had to really go back and look at some of my books and be like, mm, 
this really isn't a romance. This is really more women's fiction. There's really more of a journey that happens where there's, you know, a, a lot, you know, an an arc of growth for the character where, you know, they start in one place and then they learn many things about themselves through this journey. And then, you know, of course, a love story and some sexy bits are going to happen in there. Right. Um, but that's something that's been part of my journey is learning, oh, I need to really understand the genres. That, and I and I struggled with that at, at the beginning. And I, and I know I'm not the only person that ever did that. Um, you know, but I own it and I realize it now, but I just, I just feel like I, I need to go deeper in a story. And that's why I'm kind of more drawn to writing a little bit more on the personal journey and a little bit less on the romance side, if that makes sense. Right. Um, but then two, I am working on two books right now. One of them is women's fiction and the other one is a rom-com and I freaking love writing rom-com. I, that is so, that is so much fun. Yeah. So, I mean, I still very much love the, love the romance. Um, but the majority of my work does lean is, is more. Yeah. Into yeah. And, and I think, you know, we, we talked about a little bit and of, and of course your journey through Wattpad um, speaks to this a little bit is that, you know, for the longest time, your only option was to either pay a bajillion dollars and have somebody publish your book or to get an agent or get in a, with a publisher. And now there's a lot of different avenues. I know when I first pitched um, my book, it was um, a rom it was a romance with a mystery in it. And I knew that I, you know, I am a fan of sleuthing couples that fall over dead bodies by day and then to bed at night. That is my thing. I love it. I love you. <laughs> but at the time when I was looking to get it published, I was told to crank up the heat and sell it as a romance, but I knew it wouldn't be picked up as a series. And I knew I wanted to write a series about this couple, you know, kind of like what I'd been doing in fan fiction, right. you know? Um, and it, and again, it wasn't going to fit and I could take out the sexy bits and try to sell it as a cozy, but I like the sexy bits. Yes. You know? <laughs> so that's when I was like, I got to do it myself, you know, that, and so that's how that started. Um, and, and it's nice today. I, I'm at one of those stages where, um, you know, opportunities came up. And so I sort of settled into this way of doing it, but I'm seeing the people behind me coming in and doing other things, yeah. which is pretty exciting to watch. And I'm really paying attention, which is why I'm glad I'm talking with people like you to help me be aware of, you know, all these. Well, yeah. I mean, I think what you're doing is such a great service and it's important that we all share our stories because we need to, number one, we need to support each other in this industry. That's right. first and foremost. Also women supporting women above all things in my mind. Number two, we all have to see that not everybody is, there's no such thing as an overnight success. It takes like 15 years to be an overnight success. I, heard, I read that somewhere one time. I mean, it doesn't happen instantly. And number three, everybody's, everybody's journey is different. If we continue to share these stories with each other, we are giving each other the one thing we need more than anything in this industry. And that is hope. Right. Anything can happen. And it's so easy to get down on yourself. It's so easy to get down on the process and you want to just throw your hands up and you're done. And we've all been there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if we, you know, those of us that have, that have done it, um, you know, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I spent a fortune <laughs> <laughs> Try, you know, and, and, and you do, you have, I, at least for me, I'm often like, why does it work for them and not for me? Like, what am I missing? You know, um, and it makes me nuts, you know? And so the thing I think we have to watch for, I know I have to watch for is like, okay, well, maybe the answer is Wattpad or maybe the answer is this, or maybe the answer is that. And, you know, you really have to pay attention to what you're writing and where the people who are going to read it are, you know, yeah. that's the way I sort of look at it. Um, and so trying to avoid the shiny object syndrome, but at the same time, be open to the fact that there might be something else out there. It's, it's a hard type of thing. And sometimes, like you said, you just have to like, well, what the heck? I'm, let's just see. <laughs> oh, we'll just try it. What yeah. can I lose? <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. kind of, 
that's kind of where I am. And honestly, the the book that I have, uh, Perfect, the women's fiction novel that is uh, coming out from the Wild Rose Press here in a few months, um, that has been on Wattpad for a few years. It hasn't had mil- a million reads, um, but it's had a healthy amount of reads, probably 90,000 reads on it, which is, right. that's that's been great. Not I had nothing. Great, yeah. I had great feedback on that. And I just decided to send it out and query it a few times on a whim. I really, it was just one of those, let's see what happens. And like I sent it to a publisher, that was my seventh thing I sent out and I got a yes. Now keep in mind, Chasing Mr. Crown, that is on, that is very popular on Wattpad and is monetized and is on the main page and cycles through and and gets that recognition, which is awesome. I queried the heck out of that book and never got, I mean, I got some fulls on it. Yeah. Nothing. So again, Wattpad sees something in that book, but you know, 60 agents did not. So. Yeah. Well, I think what, what it is, I think things like Wattpad and even indie authors, like, you know, take someone like Colleen Hoover, for example, yeah you know um it it is it is it is readers who make the success and Wattpad is noticing hey wait look at all the people reading and liking Susie's stuff let's you know let's do something with that and that you know that's what happens to a lot of them they're you know they get noticed through that publishers don't sell books to readers they sell books to bookstores yes so they don't really know so a lot of the successful indie authors or people off Wattpad the Anatods of the world you know it's readers who found them and championed them and and got them noticed so and you have to have a good product but honestly a lot of it is just the time it's timing and there's luck involved and it's if the right person the right book blogger the right bookstagrammer the right book talker right it's up your you know there's there's now so many factors with the social media and yeah. even just trying to get your own work on your own to be visible on your own social media is a complete nightmare. That's a whole, that's a whole other, yeah. whole yeah. other hour we could talk about that because that yeah. is very frustrating. Yeah. And, you know, people are like, oh, you have to spend X number of hours a week. And other people are like, no, you just have to use these hashtags or use this song. Yeah. Or this song. yeah. But then it keeps changing, right? You yes. know, you should be on Facebook. You should be on Facebook. And then I'm yes. thinking when I look at my data, I'm like, my books are reaching people 65 and over, which is great if they like it, but it would be nice if younger people, but there ain't no young people on Facebook. Anymore. I know. And I'm also, I also host a, a reader's group on Facebook called Bloom with Tall Poppy Writers. And Tall Poppy Writers is a collective of very, of very celebrated, successful authors authors from, you know, a multitude of genres. And I have learned a lot from them and I I love working with them and, you know, trying to grow the page with the algorithms, the way they are to get things visible. It, it is, it's challenging. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to do a real sort of um, quick response little section. And then if we have time, I'd like to go into more detail about Wattpad. Of course. Um, sort of training. So here we go. Are you a panster or a plotter? Sadly, I'm a pantser who wishes she was a plotter because pantsing makes me want to pull my hair out, but it's the only way I've ever been able to write. I have tried outlines. It does not work for me. Um, let me tell you something. I'm, I ghostwrite as well. And that require I'm a panster by nature too. Um, but I'm required to plot and it is misery (laughs) for me. But when I write, oh my God, it is so fast. It is so fast from a plot. I don't get bored and I go and and they like, well you have to you have to stay the course and no you don't like (laughs) if I get to a part and it's like well no I'm gonna I can change it. (laughs) I'm the right well, maybe, maybe I'll try it again. I've tried it a couple of times and it hasn't worked. I just, yeah, it, it's, I find it misery uh, to plot through the middle. Yeah. I can usually get the, the first act and the third act, but it's through the middle that I really struggle. Yeah. Okay. I, next. Are you a morning or nighttime writer? 
Well, I used to be a nighttime writer, but now I'm an anytime writer because I'm officially retired after 26 years in public education. Uh, but yeah, I, I used to do all my writing at night. And I also used to try to do a lot of writing during my school breaks. So like, you know, the, during the, the Christmas break, winter holidays, I would try to get stuff done. I would try to write a lot over spring break. And then I'd really try to get a lot done over the summer writing times because, you know, I taught for the last 15 years, I taught elementary physical education and I just was dead dog tired at the end of the day when I got home after chasing around, you know, fifth graders. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all, the, all the littles all day. That by the time I got home and did the things that I needed to do at home, once I yeah. sat down, I mean, it was, yeah. 10 minutes. I know exactly. The girl was asleep on the couch and that yeah. was the writing time was. And that's the struggle, isn't it? Like sometimes you have time, but you just don't have the mental energy to do yeah. it. And yeah. It and, I, and I write in spurts. Some people write every day or they set goals for themselves. I'm, I, it's not how I don't, I don't work that way. I could write every day for like a week and then not touch it again for weeks and then come back and just be like, I, I just, I do like bursts. Yeah. I'm like, I, I like I like writing every day because the story never leaves me. It like yeah. lives with me. So the next day I sit down, it's still in here. <laughs> yeah, so, I, have to, I have to marinate on it for a yeah. while. I have to walk away. So yeah, yeah. that's so, true. I yeah. call it percolate, but marinate yeah. is good yeah. too. <laughs> okay, what is your favorite romance subgenre or trope? This is a good question. I don't know that I really have a favorite trope, but I do have favorite elements. I like an angsty, slow burn. Okay. Now, whether those are friend to friend or friend to lover or enemy right. lover right. or grumpy sunshine, whatever, I... I, I, I want them to just almost get together, but then not for a really yeah. long time. I like that. I like angsty goodness. Yeah. 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 Okay. Who's your favorite author or your favorite book besides your own? Um, well, I actually brought a book to share with you. And this is one that I'm, that I'm, I'm reading two books right now. Curtis Sittenfeld. Okay. He is amazing. I have read several of her books. Um, this is a book called Rodham, and it's her take on what if Hillary Clinton had never married Bill Clinton. Uh -huh. Fantastic. She also wrote another one called American Wife. That's the first book that I ever read uh, that she wrote, and it is based on George and Laura Bush. Um, it's a fictional, they, they, they don't go by those names, and they're not He's not the governor of Texas. He's a governor in a different state, but it's, it's definitely their story. I've read some other, a couple of other books that she's read. I just, I adore her writing style. It just captures me. And so, yeah, I, I'm a big Curtis Sittenfeld fan. Okay. She's really fantastic. Um, and okay, well, you already answered the, what are you reading now? So how about- I'm also reading this. I'm almost finished with Beach Read by Emily Henry. And I'm really enjoying this. It's, it's, it's I, I, I've read that book. Yes. Um, my daughter and I read it and we really enjoyed it. I, I, I do have some problem with her near the end. Um, but, um, but overall, well, don't give anything good. away. Cause I'm, I'm not, not, I'm not, I'm not, not, it was good, but my daughter read the next book. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's a blue cover. I have yes. it in the room and yes. my daughter said, Oh, it's really good. You'll love it. So okay. well, that's funny favorite. because my daughter read this. And this is my daughter's copy that she gave to me. Yeah. So yet again, another thing we have in common. My daughter actually, uh, her senior year of college, she just graduated in May. Uh, she worked for a bookstore. And so I don't really have to go far um, to find a good book because she, she yeah. moved back home. She's living here with us for a little yeah. while. She's getting ready to, to move in a couple of months. Um, but yeah, I, I have basically have my own bookstore just down the hall here in my house because she has all these great books from when she worked at her bookstore. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's um, I just have a lot of to be reads that I just <laughs> seem to Well, get. I also have a large TBR yeah. pile as well. Yeah. Um, what are you writing now? So right, what am I writing now? Well, I'm not writing anything right now. It haven't been for three weeks, but I have two different documents open on my computer right now <laughs> that need to be touched. Uh, I have a 
dual POV, third person women's fiction slash romance slash I'm not even really sure what it is yet. I'm about 36,000 words into it. Um, I had it on Wattpad initially and I got some really great feedback and then I kind of got to the mushy middle, which we know is really, really hard. And I was yeah. like, if I'm not cranking this out pretty regularly on Wattpad, it's not going to be good. So I just, I was honest and I was like, I, this book needs some work. I'm taking it down. So I, I removed it. And like I said, it's been sitting at 36,000 words for a few months now. I, I pop in every once in a while and read back through and look, and I just, I'm waiting to figure out where I want the story yeah. to go next. Like, I love my characters. Yeah. And I just need to kind of figure out what I'm, where the plot needs to go next. Yeah. Uh, and then I also am writing my very first, first person. Oh, no, I've, I've, ne I don't write in first person. I'm always yeah. in third person, but, yeah. um, I feel really good about it. I'm about, eh, about 7,500 words in. So, I mean, I'm just starting but when I look at it compared to my third person and when I've had other people look at it, I've had people tell me, you're supposed to be writing in first person because yeah. you're better at first person than you are at third person, which I'm like, what? <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And that's definitely going to be a women's fiction. Yeah. I like yeah. first person and it definitely makes it hard to head hop, right? Because yes, it's, <laughs> yeah, that eliminates that because you're in somebody's head. Your girl is bad, bad, bad <laughs> hopper, like real bad. And those, yeah. that was all those years of not having to worry about it with the fan fiction. I could just, woo, they'll love it. It yeah. won't matter. They yeah. want to and nobody it. cared. Yeah. Because they want to know what all the characters are thinking in those moments. And I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. Unfortunately, it does not translate outside of fan fiction. No, no. So, They're very yeah. forgiving over there. Yeah. Susie, I want to thank you so much for spending all this time. I know we've oh, been over, but... I've Please. learned so much. It's been great chatting with you. And, um, you know, I, when reading your bio, I was like, we're much more alike than I thought. Yeah. More than fan fiction. So yeah. that was sort of fun too. So thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. And for anybody who's listening, everybody who's listening, um, all of Susie's stuff is going to be over at Right Worth Heart when I post this. So you can go check out her books and her website and, and uh, see her over on Wattpad. Awesome. Jenna, thank you so much. I have loved this. I've looked forward to this for so long and I'm so thankful. Oh, good. I'm so time. glad. Thank, thank you. you. This is great. I hope you love that interview with Susie as much as I did. I love hearing the journeys authors take from where they started to now being published. It's always a different journey for everyone, and I think it's really helpful to hear that. There's no one right way to write or get your books out into the world, and I especially appreciated her sharing her experience with Wattpad. Walked away with a lot of great information on that. Now, if you did find this really interesting and want to know more about Wattpad, I actually did a deep dive interview with Susie on this very topic, and it will be posted at writewithheart.com. All members of Write With Heart will be able to have access to this interview. So if you're not a member, you really should go over and join. It is free, so there's really nothing to stop you from joining. Membership gets you a profile. You can blog from your profile if you like. We have groups and a variety of different topics related to writing romance. You could start a group if you didn't see a topic there that you wanted covered. We have weekly Zoom calls where you can get support or help others. We have monthly giveaways and a whole lot more. So if you're not yet a member of Write With Heart, but you are interested in writing a romance, I hope that you will stop by and check it out. That's Write With Heart. Heart is in my name, H-A-R-T-E dot com. Stop by, check it out. Join us in helping each other write, publish, and market romance fiction. Also, don't forget to visit Susie's website at susieengland.com as well as her Wattpad page and be sure to check out her books as well. Thank you so much for joining in. Until next time, this is Jenna Hart wishing you peace, love, and happily ever after.